Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. We are in a cozy Barbie apartment, uh, maybe late 70s, early 80s, or maybe in the future, you never know. You know, I mean, the TV definitely is giving me a little bit of a space age vibe here, but we're going to do the top 10 perfumes for Barbie or the top 10 Barbie perfumes. And you might ask yourself, wait, doesn't that mean the same thing for Barbie or Barbie? No. You see, we're going to go into the psychology of Barbie. Not just are we going to analyze the perfumes I think Barbie would wear, but also the perfumes that represent Barbie. Not necessarily that Barbie would wear them, but that maybe somebody who plays with Barbie would wear. Because Barbie is a phenomenon, isn't it? Barbie can be her own or its own character, but Barbie can also be somebody's possession. Somebody buys a Barbie, right? Well, I coincidentally love my Kens, and here you go, I got a little mermaid Ken. He's all transparent, isn't he? Because he's a little bit green and we got a green screen going on, but I kind of love these mermaid scales. It's I kind of like YouTube is almost like censoring him because he got all the giblets showing, but they're transparent, so we'll go, we'll go. So Ken, darling, hey, sweetie. Um, you know, we're also going to touch base on you. Don't you worry. You're also in the Barbie <laughs> world. Um, so there you go. Subscribe to my channel before we get to this selection. And you can also uh, push the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. But also you can follow me on Patreon, Super Dakeable spelled together there for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main Super Dacob channel, so be sure to check me out and subscribe over there as well for even more content. So, Ken, um, what do you think? What's going to be the first perfume? Ring, 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 ring. Oh, my Barbie phone. Hello? Barbie? Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Bar Yes. Yes, I'm about to do the, the top 10 Barbie perfumes. What? I should be sure to put in one, at least one that... Well, so you're telling me this is the one? Are you sure? Doesn't sound like it's very much you. All right, I'll think about it. No, no, I'm not teasing you. I'll think about it. I prepared my selection already. I don't know. If, I, I'll, I'll think about it. Oh, you want to come out of Bobby Land and teach me a lesson? If No, 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 honey. No threats. You are Barbie. Keep it classy. Okay? Don't be too sassy. All right. I'll think about it. All right. Love you loads. Bye. Cha, 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 cha. Cha. You're never going to guess what perfume she wanted me to put on the list. Maybe later. But for now... Let's begin. Let's begin to begin. So let's do a classic cliche Barbie moment here. Listen, nobody like Jeremy Scott delivered Barbie from all of the designers. In fact, this is a Moschino Barbie phone. In the, look at the Moschino font in the early 80s Barbie font. So you put your smartphone in here. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. It's alleged, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's just my opinion. So obviously I did not actually phone with Barbie. For those of you who might actually think that I did. Anyway, Jeremy Scott delivered the best Barbie rendition of a fashion house ever. I don't think anybody ever topped what Jeremy did for Moschino back in 2015. Others have tried and epically failed looking at you, Balma. Oof. Travesty. But right before Jeremy Scott left Moschino, one last perfume was released, and it is the most Barbie perfume of them all. It is bubblegum pink, and also that classic Barbie pink. It is called bubblegum. Also, also known as Toy 2 by Moschino. Now, it does smell of bubblegum. It's a very synthetic concoction. Plastic, fantastic, just like Barbie. And, um, it does have a cotton candy accord, bubblegum accord, jasmine accord, a woodsy kind of fake sandalwoody accord there as well. It's very much Barbie. Okay, but this is a perfume that matches the context of how we perceive Barbie as externals, like human beings 
who are maybe into the Barbie cult or into the Barbie, who were raised with Barbie, who are into the Barbie pink. Maybe this is also the concept of a perfume for Barbie from a person like me who's into fashion, who has worked in the world of fashion, both behind the scenes and on the sales floor and as a customer, as a consumer as well. Like when we see Barbie, we think of something luscious, a special Barbie pink, happy vibes, happy mood. Everything is always breezy and smiley, beautiful nails, beautiful make. Everything is just, ah, you know, and almost Venice Beach, kind of. OK, a little bit L.A. vibes. Uh, and that's what this perfume represents. So maybe not necessarily would this be a perfume Barbie would wear? But it's a perfume that when I smell, I think of Barbie. You see? So that's that's my bubble gum. Now, the next one, I want to kind of do the opposite of that. Like something that I believe Barbie would wear. Now, we know that Barbie has been around for many decades. So here's a perfume Barbie would have worn from my favorite era of Barbie. We're talking late 70s, early 80s. That's when also this font was popping. Barbie from the early 80s, for me, can only wear one perfume, you guys. It's Giorgio Beverly Hills. This is Barbie, okay? This is Barbie in a bottle. Sunshine, carefree life, not a worry on her mind, okay? She might have the IQ of a cricket, but don't get fooled because we got to respect the Barbie. She might look like she don't know much, but she has all of you fooled because she knows more than you think. And that's exactly what Giorgio is also about. It gives you the illusion of a floozy, but what it, what it in reality delivers is a very precise, self-conscious concept of the times it lives in. It takes a lot of intelligence to understand and frame the times you're living in. And Giorgio Beverly Hills really delivers that. It is very self-conscious. It's aware. In other words, it's very well aware of its surroundings. It knows exactly what's going on and it dominates because it knows what's going on. And that's Barbie. So you might think she's all that little ditzy thing, but she knows exactly what she's doing. And in the 80s, Barbie's wearing Giorgio Beverly Hills. Ah, oh, perfection. I mean, she's driving her pink Corvette with her white sunnies and that little pink foulard is flowing, you know, around her neck. It's flowing behind her as she's driving off in the sunset wearing Giorgio. Let me spritz it a little bit as we're... Why not? You know what I mean? Oh, coincidentally, my mom's favorite perfume too. My mom's a Barbie as well. Ha, ah, there you go. Oh, live in. Oh my gosh. Such a beauty. Now we have the next um, perfume that I would uh, see Barbie wearing. And this one is definitely something Barbie would wear. It's also from the 80s, but this, this one is a more innocent version of Barbie. This is a type of Barbie that young girls would buy, you know. While I'm saying that Giorgio was a perfect Barbie perfume from a grown-up standpoint, you know what I mean? Like a grown-up thinking, okay, what perfume would Barbie wear? Giorgio. Now, a child, from a child's perspective, Barbie is more innocent. She's not sexualized. She is 
and in fact, Mattel pushed a lot the concept of, you know, taking a bath with Barbie. Super innocent, by the way. You know, like, oh, there's always these little kids and they take Barbie with them into their, I mean, not just the mermaid version, but also the regular Barbies. Take your Barbie with you when you take a bath. You put her hair in the water. The hair changes color when it touches water. There's this whole concept of being clean, aseptic you know, having the doll while you're, you know, doing the ritual of cleaning up before going to bed in the evening. That whole concept of innocence, youthfulness, being clean, that that uh, coincides with this perfume. Yop Le Bon. Okay, this is perfection. This is Barbie's perfume. The innocent version, right? This is Barbie's perfume for taking a bath, after the bath, uh, the kids, from a child's perspective, this is what Barbie wears. Super innocent. It, it smells of baby powder. It smells of vanilla, very, very soft vanilla. It's called literally the bath. Yop le bon. In French, le bon means bath. So it's like a bubble bath, foam, you know, the hair that changes color when it gets wet. Super innocent, playful, not at all sexualized. Like, not at all. This is a very, very innocent fragrance. Super clean, happy, bubbly, effervescent, vanillic, sweet, just enough, warm, just enough to make you feel safe and cozy. Very much the Barbie perfume from a child's standpoint. Now, the next one... is, again, a grown-up perspective of Barbie, and I think if Barbie were a real living character, what would she wear today? I think on a night out, or on a date out with Ken, or whoever, I think she would wear, not Ernie, uh, coincidentally, yeah, let's put a little bit of Sesame Street in this Barbie. In my version of Barbie, there is Sesame Street, but you're like, what is this? Well, it's a little fluffy pouch. It's like a little wallet, coin pouch. I adore it. And inside, I have the perfume, and the perfume is inside of a Hermes perfume pouch to protect it, but actually, it's a Chanel. And I do believe that Barbie would be wearing the extra of Coco Mademoiselle. Coco Mademoiselle is the Barbie perfume. Not only is it light pink pearlescent in color, the container of it. I would, I would let Barbie wear the most intense uh, version of uh, Coco Mademoiselle, which is the parfum, the pure extra. And it's flirty. It's it's a Barbie that is uh, she a go getter. You know what I mean? She a go getter and but approachable. She wants to be approachable and flirtatious. Now somebody said one of the drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race said uh, that uh, if you are wearing Coco Mademoiselle like in Vegas or whatever you are a gold digger. If you're wearing Coco Mademoiselle, you're a hooker, 100%. That's what they said, right? Um, now, I, I don't agree with it fully, um, but there is something very coquette-esque and flirty about this one. But at the same time, very similar to Giorgio Beverly Hills, Coco Mademoiselle is very self-conscious, like, in a good way. Barbie knows what she has to offer but she's not cheap okay she does not just floozy around she plays with her assets she knows what her assets are and she uses them to her advantage she's not dumb coco mademoiselle is a sweet chuli it, it starts off sweet quite approachable you know what i mean easy to talk to but very quickly it turns to that dark patchouli. Yes, it does have 
a darker woodsy accord in the dry down, especially noticeable in the uh, extra. And, and you realize, oh, okay, she appeared to be all easygoing, but once you get to know her, she, no, no, she's not that easygoing. She just knows exactly what she wants. That does not make her a hoe. That makes her actually a very sophisticated person. Let's add a little bit of it while we're at it. Let me just, hold on, let me just, I'm just, This one's very intense, so let me let it air a little bit before... I don't want it to stain my shirt. I'm wearing Vivian Westwood, by the way. One of her punk creations from the late 70s, Destroy Evil. I just thought it was uh, coincidentally a great choice as a contrast to the most consumer toy of the world, <laughs> Barbie. And then we're like talking about this Destroy Evil and, you know... Vivian Westwood working to kind of stop capitalism. It's so funny. I love, lo love the clash of worlds. So there you go. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. I love Coco Mademoiselle. So, so, so beautiful. Now we go to the dark side. You know, a lot of different people like Barbie. Some people are good, some are bad, uh, but Barbie has fans everywhere. Barbie has intelligent fans. Barbie has less intelligent fans. Uh, Barbie has critics. And I do believe that Mattel, you know, because they've produced uh, Mermaid Barbie, Mermaid Ken, they've produced Wheelchair Barbie, Down Syndrome uh, Barbie, um, Vitiligo uh, Barbie, or Ken and Barbie, um, We've had all different body forms and shapes, Barbie, skin tones, everything. Except, oh, we've had pregnant Barbie, old Barbie, unalived Barbie, with a coffin. I mean, we've had it all. Except for one Barbie. We have not had a Karen Barbie. We have not had one of those Barbies that are, you know... Who is Barbie? The Democrats believe, you know, she's this feminist Democrat Barbie. But there's a lot of conservative families out there as well, and conservative kids growing up to conservative families. There's Republicans who love Barbie, too. The thing about Barbie is this, you guys, whether you like it or not, she's like Kate Moss. You know, Kate Moss is such a famous model because her face is so recognizable, but it's so easy to project onto her whatever you want. That's what Barbie is. A conservative person can project onto Barbie conservative values. A liberal can project onto Barbie liberal values. A Barbie can be anything. That's kind of the beauty of Barbie. So, well, there is a Barbie in one of these parallel universes where maybe the kid of a conservative parent or a Trump supporter even, or of a Karen, loves Barbie. And guess what perfume that Barbie would wear? Let me tell ya. <laughs> I'm t listen, Donald Trump's empire. I do believe, listen, listen to me and listen good. I believe that there is a Barbie out there. There is a Barbie out there that wears <laughs> Donald Trump's empire, okay? Look, very fascinating. I mean, it could be also perfume for Ken. It could be, you know, Ken and Barbie can share. It's, it, it, you know, perfume's not no gender for me, but this one does tend to be a little bit more aggressively masculine in nature. So maybe Ken is going to be like, hey, we'll go, we'll go. <laughs> Mermaid Ken wearing Trump empire. Look, all shade aside... I think what we lack in this world and what Barbie is teaching us is inclusivity. We have to start talking with each other, you guys. And we have to learn to put politics aside and listen to each other. So I'm not going to be that person that's going to tell you, no, Barbie would never. No, Barbie would. Because Barbie listens. Barbie listens to everybody. And Barbie has an ear for 
a Karen, for a conservative, for a liberal, for an artist that doesn't believe in anybody, for a Christian, for a Muslim, whatever. So there's also be, you know, we've seen those kids who are also raised in families that are, you know, MAGA supporters. And so, yeah, there's also a Barbie out there that wears this perfume. Why not? I do believe this is one of the perfumes Barbie would wear. Just being real. You know, I always keep it very, very real. Barbie is also that, you guys. Now, the next one is a softer version again. This is a Barbie that we've also seen many Barbies dressed up and styled both in hair and clothing by fashion houses, right? And yes, we've had the bubblegum Moschino, but the bubblegum Moschino, I explained to you why I chose that perfume for a different reason than, than the reason I'm going to share with you now about this following perfume. There is a high fashion Barbie as well, where, you know, Big brands like Valentino, Versace, Karl Lagerfeld, they would dress up Barbie. And there's also Dior. One of the most beautifully dressed Barbies were dressed by Dior, whether it be in the Gianfranco Ferre era for Dior or the John Galliano era for Dior. Now, or just the Dior Dior, the new look Barbie, gorgeous peplum skirt, uh, um, jacket. And I believe that the haute couture Barbie, at least in my book, okay, in my book, the haute couture Barbie would wear the following perfume. And that would be Dior's Collection Privée or Maison Dior, Belle de Jour. This beautiful, beautiful little pear, subtle, powdery masterpiece of a fragrance. It's one of those rare um, Francois de Machy perfumes that I really, really, really like. Um, it's a beauty. It's a subtle, delicate, sophisticated, delicious, supple beauty. Really, really gorgeous. Mm. I smell this and I think of Barbie. She would wear this as she's entering one of those haute couture maisons, you know, getting ready for them to take her measurements to prepare the haute couture dress for her. The sophisticated lady that is Barbie would totally wear this. It's a fresh, sweet, fruity, but also powdery accord. It's kind of a lot of different things in one. Very sophisticated, but, but subtle. Elegant, not too overpowering, and... If you really close your eyes and think about it, there are hints of rose, not the flower, the color, that pink, that pinky Barbie rose hue. This kind of smells of that signature trademark Mattel Barbie pink. Gorgeous. Very haute couture. Very haute couture. Mm, love it. Now, the next one is a very sophisticated Barbie. This Barbie is a 70s Barbie. She is uh, still using this perfume today, um, but it is more of the time when Mattel started making business Barbies. Barbies that are showing their independence. This is a Barbie that has her... Uh, suitcase like she has her business case with her she's going to work the shoulder pads are popping she's very very strictly dressed and she knows what she wants she is, she owns her own business she owns her own business and she's dressed by Yves Saint Laurent mm. this Barbie is wearing a Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent this is such a Barbie perfume it's, it's that sophisticated business Barbie perfume, okay? This is the Barbie that does business. She's independent. This aldehydic white floral bomb knows what it wants. It stays dry, cool, calm, and collected as it goes throughout the day. Super elegant. And yet it has... Sure, in its original 70s formulation, a metallic accord, which is less now in the 2020s um, formulation of it, but 
there's something synthetic, of course, about about this perfume, which makes it, which gives it a plasticky quality, very much Barbie. It's giving it that Barbie-esque, plastic, fantastic quality, but sophisticated and business savvy. Really, really intelligent. Really, really intelligent. Aisha in the chat says, oh, it's the, in, in Riv Ghosh, yes, pink shoulder pad suit with the white hat. Perfect. In fact, if we, you know, put together here the Barbie phone next to it, you can have that pink with that blue. Look how beautiful these colors mesh. The silver, black, blue, and the Barbie pink. It's just so delicious. So, so, so delicious. These colors really work very well, but also the smell works very well. This one also has a pink streak in it. It's like a pink with a black. Coincidentally, Rive Gauche smells the best on a gorgeous black Barbie. Coincidentally, another little point I want to bring up here. For my eye, personally, like the, the way I see aesthetics, pink blush, pink lipstick, pink eyeshadow. They don't look the best on blondes, on white blondes. Pink lipstick, pink blush, pink eyeshadow are the most beautiful on black women. It, it just, ah, oh, goosebumps. Pink on a darker tone skin, we're talking really nice, intense, beautiful, deep browns. I'm thinking Grace Jones. That's what pink was made for, you guys. It's just, it's the natural habitat of pink is on, on really, really deep, gorgeously deep brown tones and skin tones. And uh, Rive Gauche as well. This is a black business Barbie. She's wearing pink blush, but she's wearing Rive Gauche. Ah! Oh! The Grace Jones Barbie, okay? I-Y-K-Y-K. I-Y-K-Y-K. Now we're moving on to the next Barbie. We're staying in these blue hues because Barbie is known for blue eye makeup and pink eye makeup. There's a mix of both. And also in Ken, we see that happen a lot. The mix of the pinks, of the blues, a, bit of, a little bit of aquamarine here because he is a fish after all. Um, but um, we're staying in that blue territory. Cooler blues with pinky, purpley, lilac-y streaks in the smell of this powdery concoction, which is the next fragrance I totally see Barbie wearing. Again, an 80s child, but still available today. The current reformulation is gorgeous. That would be Lulu. Lulu by Cacharel. Lulu by Cacharel is a tuberose, powdery, floral accord. Oh my gosh. This is a Barbie that goes on a date every night to have fun with her friends, not just lovers, but she just lives. She goes to the movies, to the museum. She eats croissants. She drinks her latte macchiato. The cappuccino. She, she enjoys changing shoes up a lot. Uh, she just enjoys life. You know, she's vibrant, positive. Her outlook for the future is rosy, peachy. It's beautiful. Happy to be alive. Not a depressive thought in the world. That's Lulu. So Barbie. This perfume is so Barbie. Like anything is possible type of Barbie, you know? That strength that a Barbie can give you. Also, coincidentally, if you have ever smelled OG, old school, early 80s Barbie smell, like out of the box, late 70s, early 80s, that particular plastic had a specific smell. Very similar to this conceptually. So when I smell that, I always, I always think of Barbie when I smell Lulu. Delicious. 
Now, of course, we know that Barbie came in the 50s. Uh, there was a lot of decades of Barbie, not just 80s, but the best font for Barbie ever. <laughs> Hands down, just my opinion. Late 70s, early 80s. best, And also best face sculpt, but we digress. Now, for that 50s Barbie... I was thinking of uh, selecting Fraca by Robert Piguet, but it is a very dark perfume. Uh, truth be told, Fraca is more suited for, you know, the Black Dahlia. Not very Barbie. Even though I wanted to make, kind of conceptually to make it make sense for me, to put Fraca into a 50s Barbie. Fraca is from the 40s. But no. I opted for a, an early 2000s perfume, but I envision it as a symbol of the 50s Barbie. And especially a symbol of those who collect Barbie and who love Barbie so much that they would go to extreme lengths to go and hunt down, you know, the original late 50s Barbie, still originally packed, original molds, uh, you know, Face, facial hair, makeup, the side eye, as the Barbie was the... The inception of the side eye was the OG Barbie. You know what I mean? She's like, okay, girl, you know? So, um, for the person who is that obsessed with Barbie and collects hundreds of them, well, they're a little bit addicted, aren't they? No better perfume for this sort of addiction than another dark blue hued bottle you best believe this is the quintessential og barbie fragrance dior addict the eau de parfum also you can go to the og formulation with the gold stopper with the twist but even the current formula of the eau de parfum not the eau de toilette but the eau de parfum or if you can hunt down the extrait also very much but this is an early 2000s fragrance Wow, the TR flower, also very typical Barbie, this tropical vibe. You know, you can find the TR flower a lot in Hawaii. The Hawaiian Barbie, also such a vibe. The TR flower is in here, prominent. And then we got an overdose of vanilla. So it's a, there's a sweetness in there, but it is addictive. It, it's an ambrosial concoction that makes you want to smell more. So it's like once that Barbie bug bites you, and you start collecting, you got to keep buying and you get obsessed with it, addicted to the Barbie. So this one kind of is rooted all the way back to our OG Barbie from the late 50s. Even though this fragrance is not from the 50s. But you see, I always say, and you can check out my uh, other video on my Essentially Jacob perfume channel. By the way, while you're watching this one, subscribe while you're at it. It really helps out my channel a lot and thumb up this video. It really helps a lot. Thank you guys for thumbing up and subscribing. Uh, I've made a video about time travel and perfumes, like top 10 perfumes for time travel. And, and so in the concept of time travel, I do believe that perfumes open doors, memories that we even didn't know we had because they're like from past lives or other times. So it is completely possible for me, conceptually, that a perfume that was released in the uh, 2000s that... It actually is a gateway to the 50s. You see what I mean? So when I smell Dior's Addict, I see this addictive collector, addicted collector to Barbie, hunting down, you know, from the late 50s Barbies all the way to today. And so this is maybe more a perfume that the Barbie collector, the full-blown addicted Barbie collector would wear than perhaps a Barbie. But to me, this smells of a 50s Barbie. Uh, Aisha says, I, oh, yes, Addict. I, I love it. It also has a bit of that plasticky smell. Totally. It, it, it's like a powdery makeup. By plastic, what I think you mean here is it smells of makeup, of a plasticky type of makeup, of those gorgeous... 70s, 80s Dior lipsticks and how they used to smell and the packaging of them. And it's just, there's something so beautiful about it. And that kind of makeup accord in this perfume has also plasticky vibe about it. Very Barbie, very Barbie. 
Oh, love it. Love it to bits. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number 10 might be a bit of a letdown, but we got to keep it real. When we talk about Barbie, when we talk about Ken, Ken, would you care to sit on my shoulder? A Ken on a shoulder. So, oh, isn't he adorbs? So there's, there's, there's another version of, of Barbie, of a Barbie perfume, and that would be your average Barbie. You know that Barbie, that kind of, you might forget, she doesn't really come with a particular outfit. She blends in. That Barbie that is not particularly well-dressed, the makeup isn't particularly well done, Mattel did not really root her hair great, you know, she doesn't have a great hairdo. She's a budget Barbie. But the budget Barbie is not just the concept of, oh, well, you know, she's a more affordable Barbie for the kids that don't have a lot of money, whose parents don't have a lot of money. No, it's more about a vibe. That Barbie that is more generic. Well, the 10th perfume for that type of Barbie would literally be any Jo Malone perfume out there. And I don't own any Jo Malone perfumes. Sorry, not sorry. But for those of you who love Jo Malone, no shade, you know, you love what you love. Uh, but I do believe that there is a very strong connection between Jo Malone perfumes and Barbie. That average Barbie, you know? Uh, the Jo Malone Barbie. IYKYK. Now, I know a lot of you are going to are gonna say the Joe Malone, but are you throwing shade at people who like Joe Malone? I'm not throwing shade at people who like Joe Malone perfumes. But you have to admit that Joe Malone perfumes, though, you know, they're made to be layered. Uh, they're made for you to buy a ton of them and then mix and match them. They're made to be very simple. They're made to be very easygoing, pleasant, inoffensive, easy to wear at school, easy to wear in the office. You know, very modern day fragrances that do not stand out. They're there to, it's a solid companion throughout the day, but it's not going to make heads turn and it's not going to make people have an opinion. And yes, there is also that Barbie out there. Hate to break it to you. Most of the Barbies out there are like that. Most of the Barbies out there are the ones that don't really want to be seen. They just want to pass underneath the radar. They just don't want to have trouble at work. They don't want their colleagues to notice them and be jealous of them. They don't want their boss to think that they're more intelligent than they are because they're also clever. You know, they want to kind of climb that social ladder. So they don't want to be a thorn in anyone's eye. They want to be invisible and astute and clever and make it far on this weird social ladder that uh, we all are climbing. That average Barbie is wearing Jo Malone, and that is the majority of Barbies out there. What comes to mind is Working Girl. Sigourney Weaver, Melanie Griffith, Harrison Ford, Joan Cusack. I can say probably my favorite movie from the 80s, and I've just rewatched it for the five billionth time the other night, but... That type of being nobody and making it your way through, that's a Joe Malone. That's a Joe Malone. After you've made it to the top, you might switch and then you start wearing Addict, Giorgio Beverly Hills, Rive Gauche, what have you. But you start off with Joe Malone. Right, Ken? What you want? What you want? You want to give me a kissy? You want to give me a kissy? Ah, thank you, Ken. Girl, Ken is very confused on. So there you go. Oh, he's super happy. He gave Super D a little kissy. Love you too, Ken. That would be my top 10 Barbie perfumes. Now, Barbie did call me at the beginning of this video um, to tell me that uh, she has her favorite smell but 
I mean, this uh, this is a very, very bizarre thing. And um, ring, ring, ring. Oh, boy. Hi, Barbie. <sighs> Do you really want me to say this? Okay, fine. I'll say it. But I'll say it, but then I don't want anybody watching my video to throw shade at me because this is on you, girl. All right. Okay, I'll say it. All right, bye, 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 bye. I'll talk to you later, bye. Barbie would like me to tell you that she never poops and that her farts smell of candy and jasmine flowers and tuberose. So her favorite fragrance are her farts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, be sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know your favorite Barbie perfumes down below. Take this with a pinch of salt. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was meant to be for fun. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, don't poke at me. Take care. Love you loads. Bye. Subscribe.